Yo, this is Itano Plays Pokemon Diamond. So now we're gonna continue our journey towards the third gym, and we're now on Route 207. We're gonna go east through the mountains of Mount Coronet to reach the other side of the Sinnoh region, in which we'll find the next gyms that we are going to go for for more badges. But of course, you think we're gonna get there so easily? No, I think we have some trainers who wants to have a little chat with us, like these two. Go for it, my Pokémon! I'll do my best, too! Go do it, my Pokémon! I'll work hard, too! Seems like they're on the team, so we're gonna fight a Camper and a Picnicker! Camper Anthony and Picnicker Lauren. They have one Pokémon each. It's gonna be a Ponyta and Pachiritsu. So it's going to be a fire type and an electric type, which will be our opponents in this dual battle. We're going to go with Staravia and Monferno. Alright, so, of course here we have to switch, uh, not switch, but we have to send Staravia onto Ponyta, because it won't do much damage against Partridge, so we'll put Monferno to sit on Partridge too, it's, it's instead. Okay, so Staravia, we're given a wing attack on Ponyta. For Monferno, I'll just give it a Flame Wheel on Partridge. So I think that's going to be the better choice here. Because Wing Attack will do reduced damage on Partridge too because it's an electric type. Here comes the Flame Wheel. Which should do decent damage. Ooh, almost a one. Oh, a critical hit as well. Almost one shot with a crit. That's pretty nice. The hit on Stray, which will be super effective. But. Staravia is strong enough, and it's the final level difference between these. Here comes the Growl from uh, Ponyta, which means my attack on both Pokémon will be going down by one stage. That is fine by me. Even though both my attacks are physical, I am really too concerned. Both of these Pokémon should faint in the next turn now. Let's see. Wing attack on Ponyta. That should be the end. Yep, Ponyta goes down. So I just have Patricia left to deal with in this uh, dual battle. Or some XP on Luxio because Luxio is sitting with the experience share. He's level 17. He's catching up, so we might be able to use him as well. So as we get to use him, we'll probably switch the experience share around so the other Pokémon in my team can catch up a bit as well. Here we go. Some XP for Saravia, Monferno, and of course for Luxio. Now regarding Pokémon we want to use, first of all, let's take these quotes from these people. Always fun. Oh, we lost. Oh, we lost! Okay, apparently they say the same thing. So yeah, what I was saying is that... Um, for the next gym, they're gonna be using Fighting-type Pokémon. So, if you use Staravia in the Grass Gym, that's good. You can just keep on using it. If you have any Psychic-types or uh, similar, you can probably use them as well. But Psychic and Flying does pretty well against the Fighting-type Pokémon. Oh, hello there, Mr. Hiker! I just got through Mount Coronet, but we still got fuel in tank! What tank? You've been eating there, I guess. It's gonna be Hiker Justin, not Bieber at least. You can send a Geodude. Okay, I actually have to switch Pokemon now because Staravik could probably take on Geodude if I had a, a move that actually didn't be weakly effective against him, but I don't really have that yet, so I think I have to switch around. Staravia. We don't need to go far though, we can send in uh, Buizel if we want to. Let's actually do it with Buizel. Buizel is super effective against uh, Geodude because Buizel is a water type. And it's a cute, cute little sea otter. Or sea weasel as it is. Rock throw. I have bad memories with Rock throw, at least from if you saw me watch uh, play. Uh, Pokemon Ruby, the very first gym Pokemon Ruby. One Geodude crit with Rock Throw and I failed. And I have to do it again. But no problem. Geodude is four time weakness to water. That's being shown here. Bruisel gets all the XP. Of course, after he's been traded out since it was the who started the battle. But a bit of XP. Next up is Bronzor. Now that's a kind of weird Pokemon. We want to switch out to Monferno here. This is because Bronzor, which we also have in our team, is a dual-type Psychic and Steel. Which means the fighting weakness is being neutralized by Psychic. 
But however, he still has his weakness to um, he still has his weakness to fire. And as far as I remember, dark moves doesn't do much damage against Steel either, but his his psychic's weak to it, so yeah. Either way, so dark Pokemon works well against Bronzer as well because psychic types doesn't even be able to touch a dark type Pokemon. I would still go with a uh, fire type. Just be weird though. Bronzor is a living tank. He has low damage output in both attack and special attack, but his defense and special defense are really high. He's a living tank. But he can be very useful still though. And we beat Hiker Justin. Whoops! Didn't take much to beat us! Well, uh... You said you had fuel in your tank, I guess it ran out. We would rest up in Orbrook City before heading to Mount Karnat again. Well, maybe we should do that then. So, in order to head into Mount Karnat, you simply just have to go in the cave entrance here. But, there's... I want to explore a bit. The reason is because there are some items we can pick up here. Just go around here. you find this uh, school book. Let's keep him for now, but I want to battle her. She's cool. Okay, okay. Let's be quick about this. Sure thing, lady. We meet up against Battle Girl Helen. And she's, of course, a fighting Pokemon trainer. She has said Meditite. It's Meditite or Meditite, I don't know how it's spelled, but I said just Meditite. Meditite is a dual type psychic and fighting type introduced in Generation 3, which we had in our last playthrough. So, of course, he's neutralizing his weaknesses with the um, psychic, but he's still weak to flying. I don't know what they really meant with the Meditite, but I feel Meditite himself is getting a bit better in Generation 4 because of the changes of, of Pokemon moves being physical and special, instead of the actual type deciding what factor you go in for. Looks he goes to level 18. That's good. He's now pretty good. And finally he's starting an electric move. Finally. I mean, how long do we have to wait there? 18 freaking levels. No more Leer for him. Goodbye. Now we have a Pokemon that can dish out some heavy damage to Water-type Pokemon, Flying-type Pokemon, and more. Next up is Machop. Let's just stick with Staravia. I mean, you really want to have Staravia or your anti-fighting Pokemon to be super good levels for the next gym battle, which we're actually going to be a bit of a while before we get there, but when we do, Staravia is going to be the killer. Oh yeah. We one-shot the poor Machop. Good for Staravia, getting some good XP. So we'll share it, of course, a bit. And that's Battle Girl Helen. No way! Give us another battle! Alright, I'm out of Pokemon! Yeah, unless you have a way to. Maybe. What about G Game Freak introducing trainers to use potions outside of battle as well? Oh, another hiker. <laughs> Lauter brings good fortune. Is that so? I tend to laugh a bit, <laughs> so we'll see. Hiker Kevin, he has four Pokemon, that's uh, quite a bit different. And of course, as usual hikers, they usually have matchups and they usually have Rock-type Pokemon. Here comes the Geodude. So we have to switch out again. Now of course we can use Monferno here too, because Monferno is a dual-type firefighting, but nah, don't want to, I'll just go with Weasel. Wizzle does fine, and uh, it's good to have a good water Pokemon, so I'll stick with him and let him fight your dude. Rock throw again. Which uh, does about 15 damage, so it's, it does decent damage actually. Maybe because the Geodude has stat bonus for rock throw, I give him a water gun. That should be the end of Geodude, he won't survive that. 4 turn weakness, low special defense. No, you don't survive that. Get some XP on Staravia, Luxio, and Buzel. Next up, we face another Geodude. Alright, no need to switch out, we just keep with Buzel. And here we go, Geodude number two. This one is one level higher, that's good. More XP. I'm really worried about his attacking first because drop Pokemon usually are very, very slow. There are actually some drop Pokemon that are quick. Or should I say super quick, but they actually cannot speed a normal type. It's like a normal, regular Pokemon, but then they usually are weak at something else. Probably they're very weak attacking, maybe they're just 
low defense as well. Huh, does he only have Geodudes? Here comes Geodude number 3. This one is also level 16, so it's basically the same as the one we just fought. Oh well. If the trainer wants to feed us experience points, why not? Not gonna complain about it, let's just take it. And there goes Geodude number 3 down as well. Let's see if his fourth Pokémon is a Geodude 2 or if he actually has something else. Seems are near the mountain, that won't surprise me. No, he actually has nothing else, too bad. Now, remember Luxio just learned Spark? Well, let's test out Luxio and his new Spark move. Because Zubat is poison and flying, so... If you don't have a Psychic Attack or a Rocket-type Attack, give him an Electric and he will be zapped down. He's level 17 as well, and he has the Intimidate from Luxio. Use the attack power of Zubat. Now let's see what Spark will do with Zubat. Go. The health drops, and it's a one-shot KO for Zubat. Down he goes. Now it looks he gets uh, all the XP for himself because he has the expansion. So we beat Kevin. Whoa! <laughs> There's nothing I can do but laugh. Oh well, at least he laughs from his own failure or loss. That's a. Uh, I guess the guy is at least not a bad loser. You got an item. A dire hit. Not the item I really, really want, but at least it's an item we can get. Dire hit is a unused item in combat, and as far as I remember, it really increases your chance to get a critical hit. Which is um, okay, I guess. Like, for example, if you use it with like Karate Shop, you almost, almost kill a bit critting. That can be sometimes uh, deciding, but a whole turn for that? Nah, I'm not really a fan of it, to be honest. I prefer to do something else. So here we are inside Mount Cornet. Our first visit in the Mount Cornet, and definitely not the last one. I mean, just look here. Water. You know what this means? When we get Surf, we will be back in this place. And we will be back here more than once. But we don't have anything, almost anything right now, so we just have to follow the road. Ah, Cleffa! It looks like a Clefairy, doesn't it? Well, introducing Cleffa, it was actually a Pokémon found in Generation 2. Cleffa is the pre-evolutional form of Clefairy. And usually in Generation 2 and 3, at least 2, you can only get Cleffa by breeding. But now it's also a wild Pokémon. What was this? According to one theory, Mount Cornet is where the Sinnoh region began. A newly created world. A world where only time flowed and space expanded. There should have been no strife. What became of that world? Because the human spirit is weak and incomplete, strife has spread. This world is being ruined by it. I find the state of things to be... Deplorable. Okay. That guy really looks like someone from Team Galactic, so, uh, if he doesn't want to be bothered by me, I'll let him pass, I guess. But he better not try something curious, because I will not be happy about that. We already taken out two of his commanders, so I'll probably take another one. Another trip up here, you'll see we can't cross because of water, so, no way out of here. But, this rock can be breakable. Well, let's use Rock Smash. Why not? I mean, we can use it. Let's go for it. Rock Smash. And look at this. There's a light outside of the tunnel. Apparently, we are looking at getting to somewhere from here. That is good. Rock Smash again. Now, sometimes when you use Rock Smash, you might find wild Pokémon. Hmm, can I go up to the ledge there? Oh, okay, this is just a shortcut. So I guess if you don't have Rock Smash, or if maybe you don't have Pokémon Teach it, or forgot it, no worries, you can still go through the other way. There's an item on top of the ledge there, but we can't get it because we need Surf. Oh, well, much up. 
I guess it's a good time for you to capture a matchup if you haven't gotten one from Orberg uh, Mines or the Orberg Gate at the south when you were for the first gym. We want to get one now, especially if you have the Water or the Grass Starter in Generation number 4, which of course is this game. Uh, now we don't really need it to do, to be honest, though, because or actually you might want to have fighting type because there will be a gym later where fight, fighting types will be doing good. Anyways, this place Mount Cornet will be very very important for storyline, especially if you play Pokemon Platinum. This place is extremely important in storylines, but as you can see, we will be able to explore more of this place once we have Surf. So for now, just cross through the actual mountain and you go out to this place. And we are in Route 208. Yeah, two things have changed quite around. We are now on Route 208. And if we check our map, which we can do by going into our bag, going into the uh, key items, go to Town Map, and we can see where we are. So this is where we cross through now. We were here, now we are here. And Hearthorn City, that's gonna be the next destination on our next episode of Pokemon Diamond. We're gonna go to Hearthorn City. Unfortunately, our there is a gym there, but we're not able to challenge it yet. It's actually a gym we will be going to later. But we will return to Hearthorn City. Now I actually will tell you guys where our next gym is. It's not here. There's a gym here, but we'll get here later. It's not in Solace's town. It is here, in Veilstone City. The third gym is quite far away, as you see. We have to cross two other cities. We have to go through 208, which we are now, 209. We have to go 210 and 215 to get to Veilstone City. So you can see, there's actually quite a while before we even can get to gym number three. But don't worry. There'll be other stuff that'll be happening on the road, so once we get to Wellstone City, some stuff well will have happened for sure. So we'll be ready for that. That's gonna mark the end of this episode. Next episode we're gonna cross through Route 208 and we're gonna go into Hearthome City and see what we can do there at least for now before we go on to Veilstone City for our third gym badge. If you have any feedback on, let's, on my Let's Play or want to discuss this game, or any other Pokemon game for that matter, leave a comment below this video. If you enjoyed watching, leave a like. If you want to be notified when I upload more parts of my Let's Play or anything else on my channel, like music or anything else for that matter, hit the subscribe button and you'll get notifications. And with that, there's one left me thing to say and that is to say thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.